Hello, this is Questionable Coding with Vladimir. We are discussing essential algorithms and this time it will be about merging intervals. It's quite a famous task, a group of tasks that are very similar to each other because all of them will deal with an interval and um, we need to know the basics how to merge intervals, how to do an in, to find an intersection between two intervals. So let's start with the definition of the task. So given an array of intervals, uh, where intervals, uh, each interval is represented by an array, another array of um, two elements, start and end, we need to merge all overlapping intervals and return an array of non-overlapping intervals. And um, as an example, we have uh, three intervals, 1, 4, 8, 3, 13, 4, 5, and we expect an output 1, 5, 8, 13. So in this case, we merged interval 1, 4 and 4, 5. And uh, the middle one left untouched, but those intervals are not sorted right now. So we have an interval uh, which is a range of number. And it's a very simple concept, I think. Uh, let's say we have an interval 4, 11. We have a start of the interval and we have an end of the interval, which will be 11 and the start, uh, as you might guess, is 4. So let's talk about different interval positions. First of all, we have interval A, which uh, will remain untouched, and we have different in uh, variants of interval B. So let's start with the first one, when interval B starts and ends before interval A starts. In this case, we don't merge anything because they don't intersect at all. Um, in the second case, they intersect and a, a variant uh, of interval B starts before interval A starts, but then ends before interval, ends, uh, interval A ends. <coughs> um, interval B can be inside interval A. That's what we see in the third example. So it starts after the first starts and ends before it ends. Interval B can start uh, before A ends and end after it ends. Uh, I think it's also quite, quite obvious. Basically, it's uh, the opposite of the second case. And uh, also it can start after interval A ends. Uh, this way they don't intersect sect at all. We can also discuss a variant where interval B is outside interval A. I mean it includes interval A because it starts earlier and it ends after interval A ends. What we usually do in such tasks, we sort them by a start date and it helps a lot. It uh, allows us to protest them one by one from left to right and apply uh, the same logic. So it's usually the choice, the first action that we should do if they are not sorted already, but that will be, will be stated in the problem. So in this case, we always know that interval A, our first interval, starts earlier than interval B, or at the same time, they can be they can start at the same time. It doesn't tell us anything about when, uh, when they end. So in this case, we eliminate, immediately eliminate cases where B starts before A. And yeah, basically those three cases, they tell us that B starts before A. Now it can't happen. A always starts before B. How do we merge two intervals? So if we have A and if we have B, to merge them, we need uh, to form another interval and his start will be at the minimum of starts of A and B. You might see that A starts before B, so we're using its start as a start of our merged interval. And for the end, we find the max between both ends. So in this case, B ends after A, and we use this, uh, this line or this value as the end of our merged interval. That should be quite intuitive, I think. 
Let's also discuss how we can find the intersection. So sometimes we're asked not to merge two intervals, but to find where do they intersect, if they really intersect. So um, for that, it's, it's very similar, but maybe it's more tricky uh, to understand. We need to find the maximum of their starts and the minimum of their ends. So that's what you see on the, in the picture where we have A and B, their starts, uh, we find maximum of their starts and that will be the start of the B. And for the end, we find the minimum of their ends and that will be the end of A. And that's how we find, find the intersection. Okay, let's discuss and implement our algorithm. We're starting with the intervals, it's our example input. It's an array of smaller arrays. Each smaller array has uh, the start and the end of an interval. What we're gonna do, we're gonna create a result array, which will be similar to intervals, but have only merged intervals in it. And uh, we will fill it in by default with the first element from intervals. Everything else will be compared uh, to the first one and its successors. Let's see how it's done. So first of all, we'll start to iterate through intervals, starting from the second interval, because the first one is already there in the results. It will be there like all the time. Maybe it will be updated. So in this case, we'll see if uh, this interval and our current one intersect. And they do because this one starts uh, at four and this one ends at four. We uh, suppose that it's intersecting intervals. What we're gonna do, we're gonna update our result, our last element with a merged one. So it will be one six, we'll merge two intervals. And we'll check uh, the next one, the next interval, which doesn't intersect with our last result. And it will be added as is. That's it, let's try to implement it. So first of all, we need to sort intervals. We're not guaranteed that they are sorted in the definition of the task, so we can't trust it. We can't make this, can't make this assumption. We'll uh, sort it by the start number in an ascending order. Okay, uh, what's next? We're gonna create the result. It will be an array and we'll fill it in with the first interval we have. Now we're gonna iterate through all the intervals, through the rest of intervals that we didn't touch yet. So we'll start with index one because the first one we already added it to the result. And it will be i less than interval slings. i plus plus. After all, we'll return the result. Here we're gonna create two variables, interval a and interval b. Interval A will equal to our last, our re, uh, more recent uh, result interval. So it will be result, result links, minus one. That's how we'll get the last element. And we'll also have interval B, which will be our current interval from intervals array. And this is the hardest part, which was described in the presentation. We need to understand if they intersect interval A and interval B. So if interval A ends at the same time or after interval B starts, then they intersect. Otherwise, we'll just add our uh, interval B untouched to the results because they don't intersect. It's just another interval that should be there Interval B So how will we merge it first of all, we need to replace the current result. We're using the same uh, Same assignment that we had so it's result length minus one equals and equals to the new array and the start will be um, the minimum minimum of interval interval a start 
and interval b start and the end of our new interval will be maximum from interval a end and interval b end and that's it now let's understand the complexity first of all sort will require at least we go of uh, n log n unfortunately we can't lower that and uh, the iteration through the array will be we go of n which is smaller than n log n it's faster it requires less operations uh, so the ending uh, estimation for time will be n log n so time will be we go of log n log n if we are given an array that shouldn't be sorted because it's it was already sorted somewhere then it will be just big O of n which is much better and for space uh, we allocate additional space uh, for the results array and it can have the entire intervals array if they don't intercept there will be all elements from the intervals array so that will be also n and that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope it was useful. See you next time.